Uh, over the last several months, Suzanne and I have been archiving past issues of Canon dating back to 2002. So we've been scanning hundreds of pages of old issues and putting them up online. And in that process, certain names get stuck in your head. And about a month ago, we received an email from Carlos Figueroa. I knew that name. I knew that name from a Canon article in 2003. And it was it struck me as, as, as very strange, but we um, learned that he's been here for quite some time, PhD student now, and um, and it sort of struck me that in his world we were all very much tourists. Um, he's been with Canon for quite a long time, um, so much so that a couple days ago he sent me an email saying that I've gone through the archives and I'm having trouble uploading or downloading <coughs> one of my past articles. And uh, so on behalf of editors three, four, five years in the past uh, who misspelled his name Carlos Figueroa, <laughs> and I typed, that, and you, I typed that into the URL address, I apologize on behalf of them and to you personally. Um, Carlos is finishing his PhD in political science at the New School for Social Research. His scholarly interests range from U.S. political history, comparative religion, and legal theory, to literary criticism and the history of ideas. Reading and writing fiction, humor, and philosophical meditations are his closet passions. Carlos enjoys experimenting with cooking and is a Mets fan. Thank you, you this. Thank you very much. He's a Mets fan, I would say, to his, to his grave. His meditations are dedicated to his wife, Lucia. Um, and uh, they were published in the most recent issue of Canon. Please welcome Carlos Figueroa. Thank you. Um, we can use either name, whatever name you you want. Um, <clears throat> I am in the middle of my, I'm not sure if many of you are in either a master's thesis process or dissertation process. How many of you? Several? Well, these came from, from dark moments. <laughs> so you can translate them. It might hit you in various ways. Um, one was written at 3 in the morning. Okay, so I, I was just it was just flowing through me. Okay? So sometimes they say, sometimes you write and you're not really writing, you're basically channeling something else. So here we go. Um, the first one is called Uncertainty. When the whistle blows, all the workers run to their beers and laughter in the ecclesia of popular discourse. It's early evening and the bartender does not want to wait for his tip. Where is my empty money clip? Behind the scene is a fire burning in my soul as a runaway flame riding a gust of wind. Who wants to justify this godly flicker? No one has the desire or right to do so. There is a pause of wonder as I wait for the right moment to express my harried emotions. The cash arrives suddenly for the clip. It feels like a close friend who you have not seen in ages. Oddly, it reminds me of the days I ran freely in the nude with indignation. True euphoria as the money clip is reintroduced to an old friend. Aesthetics of the mind meets the erotic of the soul at the tight gap of the hungry clip. Is this where the time, I'm sorry, is this where the flame has gone? A question such as this makes it its way into my unconsciousness but remains unanswered just the same. Uncertainty may breed prematurity if allowed. Nevertheless, the promiscuous flame tells a different story in the end. It may seem ambiguous and ineffable. 
but miracles happen in short moments. Genius is revealed in times even during seemingly insurmountable circumstances. As enlightenment equals a satisfied bartender sitting under a rainy day with a full clip. Only then is the abyss of uncertainty clearly understood. So that's the first one. Now this one gets a little darker. So. It's called Wings in Darkness. Today I walked into my shadow again, not knowing what to expect or feel. Anxiety gripped my inner sanctity as I stumbled back into my quiltful bed. But just in time, I opened my eyes to a beam of light shining through my window curtains. It was the hope of the moon washing, watching over me. I know where I've been, but I still do not know where to place my next footprint. Why not? I don't care to know this answer. What is my predestination if one exists? Or what are the various paths I must consider? Only time will tell. I just wait in silence. Life comprises of stories and tales of love and despair. At times both simultaneously making one ignominiously compressed by life. The moment we try to share our personal feelings and complexities rooted in our idiosyncrasies, we become complacent and insulated. Why? Is it the externalities presenting danger in disguise? Fear of what? Whom? Which? Why then? This makes no sense to the ordinary denizens as they drink from their empty pathetic glasses, not aware their ice has melted too soon and time has run out on their fantastical dreams. But should we try to pretend the clock on our life wall is on pause and thus make one final attempt at flying again? Is this even possible with clipped wings and in darkness? Thank you.